Lemon Amiga presents A Play Giant Video Review Sit back and get play the show Somewhere at the top of our universe, there is a vast glass orb where brand new planets and heavenly bodies are conceived and nurtured until they are ready to be thrust out into the voids of space. For some unfortunate planets, there is a final twist to this embryonic evolution, the introduction of the intelligent life form and the appointment of an overlord or god to govern these poor misguided people. The competition for each godship is fierce among the universal powers and demigods as they each seek to gain total control of the newborn world. Slowly, the great orb becomes surrounded by all manner of creatures. Most will have traveled through many light years to witness this godly contest. The contest takes place in the form of the ancient heavenly game. The game of evolution, destruction and power. The game of Megalomania. Hi there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga play guide and review. Yes, in this one we'll be taking a look at Megalomania, developed by Sensible Software and published by Mirasoft in 1991. The game begins with an animated introduction sequence and this great music. And you can also see the titles as well. Unfortunately, it does have a spelling mistake in the titles, which I shall point out. But apart from that, it's a great introduction to what is a great game. This appeared on two discs, and on the first disc we get this introduction, and we also get the credits, just like a movie, where we can see most of the voices were created by John Green, and some more voices were created by Anna Bentink, and who provided the voice of the receptionist when we press the P key to pose, and James, there's a spelling mistake, Old Donald created the rest of the voices in this game and it really wasn't unusual to have voice sound effects in the game by the time we got to this stage of the Amiga's career and remember voice sound effects began with games like Berserk in the arcades and continued with games like Impossible Mission on the CE64 so voices in games certainly had been around for some time. This is a mouse based game, let's use the mouse in this case to select one of our four characters and we can only select one of the four, the others will attack us as the game goes on. Each one of the four are identical and you can see pretty much identical descriptions describing each one. So in this case I'm going to choose the green character known as Caesar simply for the name on its own. And the green character will now face the red character as we move on to one of our islands. And you can see different islands hold different characters at the beginning we face just the one, and the island is made out of two blocks. At this stage we can also load and save a game, and we can also switch on and off the music and the sound effects. But I will just show you there's absolutely no point switching off the music and switching on the sound effects, because if you load up a game just like that, you will hear practically nothing. So let's send a few guys in there, and let's check that game out using pure sound effects just on its own. As you can hear, apart from the voice acting, nothing will make a sound in the sound effects department. <laughs> and for some reason, this emulation seemed to have cut off the last few words. But let's start up a brand new game, and for this we are presented with the island screen, where we can choose our beginning island. 
And for this one, let's have the music on and let's have the first island selected. And choosing to play that island, we can press the left and the right mouse button of that numerical controller and that will give us some men. And when we click on the island, that will place those that gang, that army, in that position. And then we start off with a number of civilians. By clicking on the various icons on the instrument panel, we can see that we are in 9500 BC, which is quite some time ago, and our civilians will begin to mine straight away. So you can see our raw materials mining underfoot as they collect those. And when we have enough raw materials together, we can then design something. You can see design is split into three sections, the defense section, the protection section, and on the end is the attack and of course you will need to select whether you want to defend yourself but if you are wise of course you'll go straight for the attacking weapon in this case it's a rock so let's investigate that rock and assign 20 guys to that task and hopefully just like syndicate the more guys you attach to that the quicker it will go and you can see a visual representation of the clock ergonomically terrific and when that clock runs out, the professor will appear on the voice recorder saying ergonomically terrific, which basically means you've accomplished that job. Now we can equip our civilians or a number of those with those rocks and turn those into soldiers. Click somewhere on that screen and they will appear. At this point, they will not do much unless you send those into enemy territory. And so let's send those into the other camp and let them throw a few rocks around. Unfortunately, this is 9500 BC, so they won't be very much intelligent. We've conquered the sector! We've won! And the guy above the two shields means we can fast forward and speed up time, so they eventually knock down that fortress and kill the last guys. Moving on to the next island, the hardest part is choosing how many people we want to send in there from our group and any that we don't send into these islands will be carried over onto the next section of the game, the next level otherwise known as the next epoch. And we'll cover epochs a little later on, but for now let's just send another 20 civilians in. It's still the same time period so we can only investigate the same limited stock of weapons and defence measures. The defensive capabilities aren't really called for in this case. They will fortify our base and our stockade and or perhaps our mud hut at this stage. And you can see, well, the central column contains some defensive measures which we can place in the four holes that you can see on the top of that building. And those will be definitely needed later on when we get attackers. In theory, if we leave the game alone, then the enemy will come to attack us, just like the settlers, so we'll have to march in there and we'll have to start building up our raw materials and using those to investigate the very best weaponry possible. And at the moment you can see what we've discovered, rocks basically, and that is a formula. We need some wood to create rocks, and I don't quite understand why, but that should create those rocks and that should kill the enemy. The enemy are abroad, they are walking around, so ignorantly let's get them and let's find some soldiers Fortunately, we still have to equip soldiers with our rock. We don't have to build that all over again, but we can also design a brand new weapon or a defensive measure, and we can get that going whilst we are attacking. And so let's, in this case, just attack with that rock. And by right-clicking that mouse button and clicking them on the map screen, we can then teleport magically all our pedestrians and our fighters and they will again speed up into the distance until they've taken over that territory. We've conquered the sector! We've won! As there are 10 levels you would expect the game to introduce the player to the concept of the game gradually and I'm very glad to say that the learning curve is great in this game. You can't really make too many mistakes at this point. But on the third level, you can see we face two enemy at the same time, and that means we have to make an even bigger gamble as to how many civilians we send into the island. Always try to save a few for the next epoch. We're still in the first epoch at the moment. 
The enemy will then select a region to inhabit and then the game will begin. And this has snow on the floor. Yes, there are three types of levels in this game. There are the mud levels, otherwise known as sand. There are the grasslands and the snow forest as well, you can see at the moment. And that hesitantly ties in with the Christmas theme. And of course, this game is all about time travel. In the Stone Age period, this game is a kind of a joke. You can use this period to actually investigate some of the harder types of materials to build. And that saves you building those later on and saves time. I'd certainly investigate the stealthier, better weapons first of all. And this slingshot looks particularly important. So let's investigate that before we even try to attack the enemy. And once again, the enemy won't even attack us at this stage unless we are very, very foolish and park right next to us. So luckily our territory is free from the enemy. And let's use that slingshot to clean up these levels the easy way. As I say, sometimes it's best to investigate the slingshot when in the next epoch we'll gain spears and heavier weaponry. So there's no point investigating the shield and the protection measures first of all, because you can really take out those guys with rocks anyway. So let's send those in with the slingshots anyway, and they'll certainly make a bastard job of it and a more accurate job. And since we have two enemies on the go, it's important to check those out and we can see the stocks by clicking on those shields and that will show us how many of the enemy are on that screen. We have zero at the moment, but you can also see that the icons give us a rough idea of the things that are happening in the game. This one at the bottom says that if we leave those guys, 42 it is on that screen, alone for one hour, they will actually build a fortress for us right there. And so we can expand our town and build a fortress somewhere else. If we leave those guys alone, you can see that time can be sped up as well. And they can build another community that will then spawn civilians who can then mine more materials, who can then be armed and sent into a battle. So on the later levels, the entire option of the game is to build more communities and get those civilians built up as quickly as possible in the shortest time as possible. And that tends to be what the enemy does to try and beat us. But on the later levels, it will attack directly. And here's the last enemy that we have on that level. We still have the one guy to find, but for the moment, let's concentrate on building. Here we go, another encampment. And then protect that base from any enemies simply by guarding the roof of that thing but again i don't really bother guarding the roof at that stage because this first level this first series of three islands is really a pushover and you can see the base defenses begin rather rudimentary a pokey stick basically to poke the enemies so let's not bother with that let's just load up with our slingshots with three agents that are floating around that level or six and so let's send those in to build up and boost our army you can see there are now 40 on the screen 42 and some of the enemy agents will be wiped out on contact at this point and progressing in this game is very quick once you have all the allies on your side we won! On the next set of three stages, we find 100 free citizens to add to our 20 that we saved from the last set. So that gives us 120 and a free leg up. If we don't, we'll only get those 100 citizens and it really is important to gain as many as possible to carry those over to the later levels. Using as few as possible, maybe even 10 on the first few islands, just so that you can get plenty moving on to these. Each island is named, and this is Four Marker Island. And on Four Marker, well, there isn't much to investigate except those two enemies guarding the other two territories. So let's load up on the pokey sticks. So investigating that, no problem. And our minerals are building up. We need some bones and some wood as well. And you can see in this epoch, we are 3000 BC, and therefore the clothes that people wear have had an upgrade. And as we move on through the stages, we'll find armor and things like that. The design's ready. 
apparently the design is now ready for that pokey stick that we decided to invent and now that, that thing is ready we'll have to place those on the roof one at a time and that will help guard our newly developed stockade and up to four can guard that at any one time and you can see there is relatively no point doing that unless we are being attacked in the first place so really that's a waste of good men and yes men in this game is a general term we can't really see if these are men or ladies but at this period men tended to go out to battle apparently and so well that's the stereotype at least for now let's just get on with conquering those other warriors whatever they may be and for this of course we've already investigated that slingshot we've designed it let's build it let's get over there and let's start destroying a few of those terraces and a few of those enemy buildings you can see they will materialize and try just like the settlers to defend themselves but thank god the settlers takes ages to destroy a castle whereas this game speeding up the time takes seconds we conquered the sector we won in for Micah and so we go back to the map to check out Dracula Island and we have a choice of Dracula or etc and so let's check out etc first of all and it's important with a map that size to pick a really good location because those enemies appear at random it isn't always possible to outflank those and have a great start to that game etc we find a deep cast hole and we also find extra minerals that we have to mine in order to build things and those extra minerals in this case are pretty hard to mine you can see 28 guys are associated to one of those solarium and that has only mined half a ton so far so at the beginning of every game it's certainly worth excavating as much as we can from those mines if we can't we can always press the escape key and that will quit back to that map screen giving us the same 91 citizens to tackle these islands so let's tackle Dracula this time and you can see the enemy in this case has already selected its position so we can choose wisely where we want to go let's hope we get through it a little better this time and of course we can also send in more guys to make that job a little quicker Dracula we find a horde of rocks and some planetarium perhaps planetarium depending on how you see that and yes I have been to the London planetarium back in the day and that was certainly an amazing look at the universe before the days when we had such games like Elite Dangerous and you can see the universe is spread in the background of each of these games and you can see the game map is on an island in the universe casting the gods theme throughout this game and yes the elephant in the room is this game was highly inspired by Populous by Peter Molyneux and in an interview with John Hare way back in issue number one of Amiga Power page 67 he actually said that he would have liked to invent the game Kickoff and many other people including Anthony Crowther and David Braben himself and even Gary Bracey from Ocean Software said that they would have chosen Populous could they invent any game in the world. Really, God Sims weren't even known before Populous, and the God Sim, remotely controlling characters on screen and making them walk around, ended up turning into games like Dune 2, which ended up turning into Command and Conquer, and now that we are in the modern era, these third person god sims and command them ups are still quite popular although you really don't get to see many of those except on the pc platform mainly because that has a mouse and you can see at the moment on the amiga we are still mining heavily those ores in order to attack these guys and you can see simply wandering around sometimes that helps basic protection but if you leave those wandering around in the cold too much they will die 
And so they will enter that fortification and return back home. The and you can also check out the enemy and what the enemy are up to as well. But let's carry on mining. And I always like, just like June 2, to speed up that time to the maximum limit. And that speeds up our evolution. And before this game, there was also Sid Meier's Civilization as well, where you could actually do that. And Civilization is certainly a time travel game. And this, now you can see, our modern era knights is also a modern time travel game where we start off in the past. And by the time you get to the 10th epoch, that is actually in the future. So you start off with sticks and stones, and by the end of it, you get to fly jet fighters and you also get to blow guys up with bazookas and you also get nuclear weapons and after that you will get flying saucers and lasers so this game really is a time travel game fitting in with our theme this series of games and this is quite literal and so you can see the enemy milling around it gives us an easy opportunity to take those guys on now that we've finally decided to invent the spear and uh, let's once again move our army into that enemy territory and uh, let's see how far spears go against that fortress we've conquered the sector Unfortunately, I don't think it's possible to move our army into another position unless that position is into an adjacent square and so you saw me moving my army from square to square and that tactic is more important on large maps and you can see this is quite a large map but there are larger ones in the game and so let's select some more of our guys hoping to leave some behind and because this is quite hard, I'm actually selecting quite a few warriors to spawn into this area. And hopefully they will take on the enemy and make that job much quicker. Megalomania was released on a number of platforms including the Amiga, the Atari ST, PC-DOS, the FM Towns Machine and also the SNES and the Sega Mega Drive, also known as the Genesis. And so you can see a number of screenshots there at the moment. Unfortunately this was not backported to the Commodore 64 even though a game like this, a very simple sprite based game, could have easily been possible and we certainly got games like Supremacy on the Commodore 64 which was a kind of god sim where we had to build up our armies and attack planets so this was entirely possible but you can see the other machines are slightly different they use slightly different control methods using their limited controllers where we obviously got to use the mouse on the ST and on the DOS machine and so you can see that this game has got potential on all these areas it's certainly easy to understand and it's quick to figure out but it's hard to master and it will take some mastery of this game to get beyond the third level we will get towards that third level on this playthrough and for the moment let's just balance those minerals and set off our economy the theme music you can hear in the background is based on halt's mars from the planet suite and i had the planets on cd when i came out and i remember listening to that back in this day so that has been put to good use although that does run in a small loop and so that is rather limited but it doesn't seem to get boring and of course the theme of mars is pretty much an attacking theme and a dominant theme which really helps this game I really do like the music in this game, unfortunately the sound effects really take a back seat except for those voice sound effects which are still great 
and they make this game atmospheric and a little cartoony. We won! Gaza is the first item in the third round of missions, the third epoch, where we find Hernia Island and also Ibiza. Well, would you rather go to Gaza, Hernia or Ibiza? So let's select Ibiza and hopefully choose the right number of warriors to attack. And if you make a real disaster of that, you can quit back any moment, even if you have one warrior remaining, and you can try that land all over again. You can see the graphics in this game are very reasonably well drawn. I've certainly seen golf games which haven't got a great graphic environment such as this. And don't forget, Sensible Software went on towards Sensible Golf, which appeared in 1995. Megalomania was released on Mirasoft's Imageworks label, and of course Mirasoft collapsed a long time ago along with Robert Maxwell, but if you see the cover art of this game is slightly misleading because it shows ancient warriors taking on modern warriors, and rough savages taking on spacemen, and sticks and stones and lasers and that kind of thing. So even though I do like the castle in the background, and the quality of the art is also great, but unfortunately we do not get cavemen riding around in World War I fighter planes, nor do we get ancient civilized warriors with clubs battling it out against Star Wars lasers. And so this game is time travel based, but they don't actually fight each other. So the cover art is slightly misleading, although it's very striking and it stands out amongst other cover art. And don't forget, sensible software's other games are usually quite bland when it comes to the cover art. And sensible soccer was mainly black and white with a few colours. Although I can't help feeling that that sandy yellow colour on the pattern and the background would be better a darker browny colour to fit in with the game. But you can see owners of this game actually found a demo of First Samurai included with the box and I didn't actually have this game back in the day on original. I of course had a copied version, so I did not get the first Samurai demo disc. On the Amiga you can see we are having a hard time choosing between all these new weapons. You can see cannons that we can research, cannonballs, and you can see archery weapons as well and sometimes it's good to research some defense at this point so the fortress is a lot more protected but let's stay on the attack let's try to invent something that's worth attacking with and it takes a lot of materials to build the cannon but we already have the spears let's try that and Hopefully, even though we are on the third epoch, if we march in very quickly with those, then we can start to dent the enemy before the enemy has had time to build up its forces. And that means we can destroy its base pretty quickly and get that job done. We've conquered the sector! The enemy in this case has moved to another territory and that means they overpower us and that means that we have to send out even more guys but that's absolutely no problem we just have to do that before they build a defensive territory of their own and dig into that location so that we can't turf them out so let's put full forces into research so that we have that weaponry and we could send these three guys up there at the moment but that really wouldn't dent their military firepower so let's try well that's another one we can build those up one by one if we really want to do that and as those weapons become available we can then select a warrior and send them in but in this game apparently according to research the defensive capabilities of the enemies will be much stronger than our attacking capabilities given an equal number of men so if you find five men then certainly send eight or ten men to attack those because five against five will mean we'll be defeated. So let's build up those numbers and check out those numbers on the shields. 
and as soon as we send those in, hopefully those will be depleted. The only slow point in the game appears when it's action against action, man on man, and sometimes it takes some time to get rid of all our foes. We cannot just walk into those, they have to make contact with one of our weapons, and then it's level over. Out of all the music, I think this looping synthesizer on the map screen is perhaps the most annoying, and on the emulation, that doesn't quite match the loop, and so it sounds pretty terrible. But I'm not quite sure whether that was there in the original game. Certainly the main music itself is absolutely great and we'll go on to the producers a little later on. For now our flag will appear waving on top of the island that we've captured and we still have another two islands to go. Let's avoid Hernia like the plague and try Gaza. game is mostly known as being called Megalomania, but it did appear on the Sega, known as Tyrant's Flight Through Time, and to my mind that again moves away from the spirit of the game. This game is certainly more towards Megalomania and Megalomaniacs, because we are a god in this game, rather than Tyrant's flying or taking flight through time. On the box art, we can even see guys running away from the action, and in this case Stone Age Man wearing those bullets, where one stray bullet could set off all those bullets like firecrackers. Well, he's running away from the action and he's being gunned down this time by a World War I fighter plane, so yet again the cover art in this game actually moving away from the actual game mechanics in the actual game. So apart from those small misleading aspects, I do like actually the cover art and it's not really a memorable piece like Defender of the Crown. On the Amiga you can see our minerals have dried up as well as the things that we can make and according to this we have to invent that spear in order to gain any advantage whatsoever. That will take four days, or maybe four millennia in this game. And we are now 100 BC, so we aren't too far away from the Roman Empire at this stage, so we'll gain armor, but unfortunately we cannot equip our knights like the settlers. We'll just have to send them in with whatever armor that they happen to be wearing. As the minerals become scarce and our upgrades become scarce depending on which island that we are on at the moment, then this game becomes more tricky and you can't just take the same tactics and the same formula every single time and every single level. This game will stretch the player and we can even reinvent things and dump things. There is a bin there if you want to throw those inventions away. Sometimes you might be able to invent things which require less minerals, but generally it's best to leave those once invented. We now have 14 guys, so let's start that skirmish, let's send those to the other side of the island, and hopefully we can take on the enemy and sweep and clear. Megalomania was designed by a group of guys, credited to John Hare, Chris Yates, Chris Chapman and also Tony Beckwith. And Tony Beckwith also co-designed the 3D game Thunderstrike. The code was created by Chris Yates and Chris Chapman and according to the credits Chris Chapman did the most of this coding but Chris Yates, of course, and John Hare go way back in sensible software. You can see in this photo we have John Hare in the middle, and we have Chris Yates, and we also have Chris John Chapman. So Chris John and Chris John Chapman make up sensible software at this time. 
These are promotional pictures which appeared in Amiga Power at the time of this game's release. The graphics were also created by a group of individuals, namely John Hare, Joe Walker and also Alan Tompkins. John Hare needs no introduction and these still screenshots actually came from WizKid, the game that they released just before this and WizKid was released in 1991. Alan Tompkins was one of those graphics artists which unfortunately went from bad to worse. He began with Veteran in 1988 and moved on to the unbelievably bad Outrun in 1989 the Amiga conversion of Mr. Heli in 1989, the quite megalomania-like Battle Master, and the Chronicles of Omega in 1990. You can see Great Witch, but unfortunately the levels themselves are quite bad. After Megalomania, he moved on to classics such as International Rugby Challenge, the lowest rated game to ever appear in Amiga Power with an incredible 2% which appeared in 1993. <music> Lastly, this music is credited to Richard Joseph, yet again the maestro on the Amiga, and here you can see a classic photo of Richard, and also a more recent photo of him collecting the BAFTA award. To this day, he is still the only guy to ever pick up a musical award for creating musical soundtracks to computer games. And so BAFTAs these days tend to go mainly towards movies, of course. So unfortunately, no longer with us, Richard Joseph always sadly missed. On the Amiga we find ourselves surrounded and it's the first time that we've actually struggled on a level since we started this game. You can see the yellow guys now marching all over that map and if they settle in one area of course they'll build a camp there which means taking on those camps one by one is all the harder if you put all your eggs in one basket and send in one big raiding party to get massacred then you'll find yourself defenceless. You can see I have no defences on my stockade whatsoever, so what I'm about to do is actually quit. Mm. By pressing escape we can access the map screen and from here we can load and save a game at any point. And we can also retry that level with the same number of guys or a different number of guys. And of course that will make a huge difference. And if you've played this level before, maybe you can tell me the number of guys. But I'm also trying to save some more for the next epoch of the 10 in this game. And we are still on number 3 at the moment. So players certainly do get their money's worth with this. And it certainly isn't a pushover that you can sit down and play in one sitting unless you spend all day doing it. And so the islands will get harder and I've seen the end of this game, it brings up a still screenshot with a very appalling ending sequence, but apart from that, I think the final battle on the island, which is an absolute melee attack by everybody in the game, all raiding each other at the same time, is very difficult indeed, and I've only ever seen that on long plays, and I haven't even got that far in this game. But you can see up to level 3 it becomes a challenge and it doesn't stay the same like civilization, it really does become harder and you can't always guarantee victory even if you have some strategies already in the bag. So this game flexes your muscles but on the surface it's very basic. There are a number of collectibles but they amount to the same thing, i.e. extra weapons and the upgrade path isn't as good as other games which came later most notably as I say Syndicate and things like that but it's great that we can tool up guys and it's great that we can see the evolution of our tribes as we move from era to era we can transform epochs even during a game we've advanced a tech level there we go so we are now no longer 100 BC, we are actually 900 AD 
and that means our castle will take a makeover. Again, just like Civilization, we can move through those if we play this game long enough. And those will mean extra defenses, not just for us, but for our enemy as well. And so you will need ever more greater weapons to take them out. Time can even advance during the same game, and this is exactly the same game. You can see the castle has just advanced again, and now we're 1400 AD. And we're getting up through the Middle Ages, and we're getting quite up to date already. So if you spend ages and ages and ages completing these levels, yes, you will find that you have moved on so far ahead of time that you are now in the laser zone and fighting space battles in the, these islands are standing still. So I guess we do move through time in this game if you do leave that long enough. But if you fight these quickly enough, then you should be able to take down these early easy castles before they defend themselves like fortresses, just like this. And so that just makes the job a lot harder. And so castles require cannons, and cannons are the minimum requirements, it seems. So let's get those on the go, and it won't take too much time to get those being built. this stage we can also build a secondary building in our little village that is a factory and the factory will churn out weapons much more quickly we can also build a mine and a deep cast mine at this stage that will mean that we can excavate minerals much more quickly and so with factories and mines on the go then production speeds up and sometimes you have to slow this game down Ready. Moving on to the scores, the lowest score I could find yet again is the current score on the Lemon Amiga database at 85% and the Swedish, I found out the Dato magazine is 86%, Zero magazine gave Megalomania 89%, Amiga Force and Amiga Power gave this 90%, Amiga Format and Amiga Action gave Megalomania 91%, The One gave it 92%, Sea Amiga gave it 92%, and Generation 4 gave it 92%, Amiga Computing gave it 93%, and Ace Magazine also gave this game 93%, which gives all those combined an average score of 9 out of 10. As you can see on the Amiga we have built a new fortification which well we could actually fortify that with extra guys on the roof the factory's been destroyed but those enemies soon took those guys away so even one enemy on that screen can take down our guys Tower critical. and that's not particularly easy when all this yellow is filling the screen it's all I think Megalomania still stands up today, it's quite hooky to get into and very easy and it might not be a very long game and it might not be as absorbing or as difficult to get into as Populous. So when we lose the game we don't get any scores but if we choose to save the game we'll be given a password. Instead of saving that to disk we can then enter that password and continue from this level. You can see we've captured one land and we have two to go. Thank you for watching another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review.